Yo, what's up, everybody? It's the Honda's Date and MLB podcast. This is episode four. We're four weeks in, bro. How you doing? How you feeling? Uh, doing good, man. Doing good. Uh, this time's going by quick, man. I can't believe we're already on the fourth one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we're learning little by little, right? Um, hopefully, it yeah, becomes a hey, little. Yeah, work, working out. Working out the kinks, trying to make it smooth for all you guys out there. Yeah, yeah. try to make it as smooth and entertaining as possible. So um, today's show is going to consist of our typical reactions. This time around, we're only going to do about three videos, maybe four, depending on the time, because two of those videos are going to be a little bit longer. Um, You'll see what we mean. Then we'll go into some news. And after that, we're going to do we're going to attempt a Sporkle quiz. Just to have some fun and um, test our baseball knowledge on the spot. Um, we're still trying to figure out the, the technical side of the Sporkle quizzes, like as far as recording our screens and all that. But if you know if that doesn't come out, then you'll know why. Um, so without further ado, let's get it cracking, bro. Um, uh, with the first one, it happened on August 12th, 2000, and Benny Agbayani. Forgot the number of outs. So whenever you're ready, let me know and we'll hit play. Ready, bro. All right. One, two, three. Mike Hampton on the mound. Yeah, I was about to say. Looks like a, a typical. It's the two-hand cash. Two-hand cash. Proper uh, fundamental. He gave, he gave it to a kid. <laughs> Oh, uh, so so that was that was a, one of the things I I wanted to say on on the caption the YouTube caption he says that Benny Abiani thinks he has caught the third out and gives the baseball to a fan then has to ask for it back. I have no idea where he asked for it back, bro. He just yanked that he just yanked that ball away from that poor kid, man. Oh, look at him! Oh, that's Bobby Valentine. That's that. It's probably like one of the worst feelings. That probably has to be one of the worst yeah, feelings, bro. So yeah. Benny, oh, just oh, you just want to hide out there, bro. <laughs> he hid behind that big ass glove. Uh, I mean, he did everything right, proper route, you know, like you said, two handed catch. Yeah, and and even giving the ball away, it was for a little kid. I mean, yeah, I was seeing that trying to be a, trying to be a good guy, you know. To... Bro, did you see that fan in the green shirt went like this too, saying that there was two outs? Yeah, yeah, he's, he's pointing at it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Watch, you'll see the fan right now. Oh, no, you can't see. It. Fuck, he didn't see him right now. But look, somebody even pushes the kid right here at the end. <laughs> <laughs> like the kid's not the kid's fault. He's just. <laughs> And then, oh, so, so the ball, the ball was dead. Obviously, once it goes into the stands, the ball's dead. So he could just let him keep the ball, man. So he just, he just totally ruined that that poor kid's day. So oh, uh, just, real, just real quick, the the Mets were were up one zero in the fourth. Uh, bases loaded with one out. Bobby Estalella, I think is his name, hits a fly ball. So the runner on third uh, scores, obviously, on the sack fly. And since it's a dead ball, the runners move two bases. So the guy on second scores as well. And the wow. guy from first moves to third. Um, yeah. as, far, as far as the day, uh, Agbayani was over four at the plate with two Ks. And uh, he, was re- he was removed in the top of the eighth for uh, probably a defensive replacement, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah most, most likely. Because uh, the, the Mets actually uh, bailed him out and scored two in the seventh. In the bottom half of the seventh, oh, okay, to, good. Uh, yeah. to to regain the lead, uh, three to two. Mike Hampton, like we mentioned, the lefty on the mound, he went seven innings and he actually ended up getting credit for the win. Nice, nice. So as far as far as Agbayani, um, he only played five years in the majors. Most games he played was 119, and it was actually in 2000. His last game was in um, the 2000 season, September 29th. And as far as some notable incidents like that, um, I have a, a couple, bro. Ichiro in 2012 with the Mariners and um, the Angels. And Joey Votto with the Reds and Cardinals. And then Puig between the Mets and Dodgers. The Puig one was a little different. It, it didn't affect the game like you would think because um, 
Puig's catch was actually the third out, but he gunned the ball to uh, okay. <laughs> who, who was their third base? So he was Juan trying Uribe. to get four outs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he gunned the ball to Juan Uribe, <laughs> and then I throw the clip on there. Um, we'll try to get all these clips because I know you're gonna name a few. Um, and then that's, you could, you could just see Juan Uribe so. catch it, and he's just like looking at him like, <laughs> "What are you doing, bro?" But uh, it's just, I mean, it happens, you know, like for sure for uh, for us. Uh, for us fans, looking at them from the outside in, we can be like, "Oh, how do you do that?" But you know, it happens, bro. Everybody has a brain fart. It's um, it, they make it look like it's an easy sport and all that, but you know, it's just uh, imagine 162 games, bro. Every now and then, you're gonna fuck up, bro. Nah, yeah, that's that's exactly what I was gonna mention as well. Like even even us, even myself. I know when when I was playing high school ball, like I was. I would be daydreaming out there sometimes, you know, some yeah. of those, those long ass, <laughs> some of those long ass games that we would have. Yeah, yeah. You just thinking about the homework, what are you gonna do when you get home? Like for the week, <laughs> funny because he, he wasn't paying attention, but he's still, he's still, he's still, uh, you know, trying to <laughs> trying to get the double play going. Yeah. Um, before right, and I did. I think he handed that one to the fan as well, but I don't remember him taking it away from from Agbayani, like like the way Agbayani did, right? Yeah, um, yeah. The other ones I have uh, have I had I had written down. Um, Jose Fernandez, the pitcher from the Marlins. He, oh, okay. Uh, he lost track of outs while he he lost track of outs while he was running the bases. So they doubled them off to uh to end the inning and the oh. and the little rally they had going. The next one I had was the Josh Hamilton one, kind of similar to the Jose Fernandez one. Josh Hamilton was in twenty thirteen. Again, he lost track of outs. It was the ninth inning. His team was down by one and he got doubled off to uh end the game. <laughs> oh, wow. So that bro. Was, yeah, that's really I I mean at least the Mets over here, my boy Agbayani, he was able to, you know, uh, they were able to win so the game. But that yeah. that Hamilton was, yeah, yeah, that was bad. And then the the last one I have is the Rockies in 2012. This one was kind of like the Puig one where they, they're not paying attention. So they actually uh, got three outs in the inning, and nobody moved. Like they all the all the players stayed on the on the field. That was the weirdest thing ever, because you know, for one person to not pay attention, okay, you get it, you know. But for all, <laughs> for all nine, even the pitcher and the catcher, they just stay out there, and and hopefully you can throw that video up there, bro. Because the, at the yeah, end of that video, the, the umpire is like, like, what the hell are you? What, are you what guys, are we doing? How are you guys doing? Like he, he thought, he thought they were trying to to prank him, you know? Yeah, so, oh, that's funny. Yeah, it just just goes to show that you know, it it happens it happens to the best of us, but uh. I think that's also a, a part of baseball, you know, because uh, it can be kind of a slow game, but you have to always be uh, attentive and, you know, keep your head in the game, as yeah. uh, the coaches used to say, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I I wonder if that's ever happened, like, in a huge, like, game, bro. Because, honestly, I, I, I don't know if you remember this, this is basketball, but I think it was Chris Weber. Who had like that one where he had a fatal like timeout call and it was like he was in college basketball though, and like they didn't have any more timeouts so it turned into a technical, and it was just a mess, oh. bro. You know which which it's like in the nineties, bro. Yeah, I don't know I, if it was I, Chris I, Weber, bro. I don't I don't remember exactly, but I I think I think I know what you're talking about. But I, I, I wonder think Weber, bro. I wonder if there's been a no who um. But as as far as like playoff implications stuff like yeah, that, I, fatal, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think it's happened, bro. I no, nah, I would have to look that up. But off the top of my head, I don't think so. I would hope not. <laughs> you yeah. you would hope in the playoffs, you know, everybody's hundred percent invested on what the hell's going on. You know? <laughs> yeah, bro. Um. So you hey, but uh, like, but yeah. Uh, I hold on just real quick. I, but yeah, yeah, yeah. He did have some. He did have some uh, clutch, clutch hits, clutch performances in that 2000 uh, playoff, playoff run they had. 
Yeah, um, he had a big moment in the beginning of the year, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where he had like I think a, as well. The, yeah, it was like a walk off. I want to say like a maybe a walk off Grand Slam. I can't remember, bro. But um, I remember he did have a big moment. I think it was in the Tokyo game. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe we'll throw that up so we can show some love to him too. You know, we're not just trying to do. <laughs> um, so you want to take us into the second one, brother? Yeah. So the next one is a uh, Braves Padres brawl. One of the most notorious brawls of baseball. This one happy four. Um, ready for the video, bro? All right, countdown. All right, three, two, one. So this All is right. that five minute video. We this is have... Wiggins. Oh, they hit Perez. Yeah, yeah. Perez Pat was Walker a pitcher. The, the yeah, pitcher, yeah. pitcher of the uh, Braves. So, oh damn, bro. Yeah, this is this was a brawl, bro. This is none of that. The pitcher knew what to do, huh? He just walked away <laughs> from everything. <laughs> I started this shit, but I'm not finished. So yet. I thought. I is that John McSherry on the floor? I think so, yeah. The umpire. Yeah, they, that, that umpire was getting down dirty. Look, Pascal Perez got away from the from the scrum, too. He actually ran away from that thing with his bat in his hands, trying to use it as a weapon. Oh, shit. And and the funny thing is he didn't end up getting uh, ejected and got credit for the win. Hmm. <laughs> Hell, yeah. Shout out to the 80s. <laughs> Um, so from what I had read, bro, um, the game before Wiggins, um, attempted to bump for a hit multiple times and, um, Perez started shouting at him. This was on the, the game dugout. before. Yeah. That's right. From and the then dugout, the next yeah. day, the first pitch, bro. First pitch, um, Perez. Oh shit. Now the fans, Look at that, the fans, the fans are getting involved. Well, that's. Oh, there's no way that that would happen nowadays. <laughs> uh, no, bro. If anything, bro, the the players oh, they would, would they would have would jumped the fans the game, bro. Nowadays, yeah, nowadays. yeah, that's true. I had also read that McSherry after this one, this is in the ninth. No, after the <laughs> one in the ninth, um, he McSherry sent everybody to the clubhouses. And uh, they were you. You read that too. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, uh, I read that. That that I thought that was really interesting, bro. I was gonna mention that. that that's gotta be weird as hell. Uh, so remember the COVID years that they, they were playing without fans in the stands, right? Mm -hmm. They're still going at it. Um. So how how weird would it be to have a game with no nobody in the dugouts? Like you, usually, you know, there's somebody chirping from the dugout. Especially back in the '80s, I imagine how much they were barking from the dugouts, right? So that, yeah, that's gotta bro. be weird as hell. Templeton. So and the the first the first draw came in the eighth inning. So they they were actually throwing at at Perez all all game, and they they finally plunked him in the eighth. And the yeah. second draw took the second draw okay. took place in the ninth. Of course, after these fans uh jumped in, after after the dust settled, look at that. Fans getting arrested. After the dust settles, 17 ball players were ejected, five Braves, 12 Padres, um, both managers, and four replacement managers. Uh three three managers were were ejected on the Padres side. Uh ba -ba -ba. yeah, and one for the Braves. And yeah, as, like you mentioned, after that second brawl, the they got rid of all the players in the dugouts and they had police policemen standing on top of the dugouts to to kind of control the fans. Oh look, that, uh, is that a, is that a clip from the dugout? Oh no, they're still all out on the field, and that's why the dugout's ready. <laughs> if you notice right there, Horner, he had a he was on a DL. He had a broken hat. It looked like. Um, at one point, I read that Champ Summers tried attacking Perez, but Horner, you know, he just blocked his ass. And I read. I'm pretty sure you saw that that too. The Horner was actually in the press box when when the when they started throwing at each other. And, oh, shit. <laughs> and he made his way down to the dugout, got a uniform with his cap. Hell, yeah. Ready to go to war, bro, you know? <laughs> Hell, yeah. 
No, if I'm not mistaken, story. John McSherry is the umpire that passed away like tragically on the field from a heart attack. Oh, that's right. The big yeah, guy. So, yeah, rest in peace to him. Damn, you're right. Um, so the from what I read, one of the, one of the brawls lasted up to ten minutes, and like you said, they were trying to hit Perez all game. At one point, San Diego's Ed Whitson tried hitting him. Um, he tried hitting him three times, Ron. He missed all three times. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> the first three events, no, nobody got him, so that's why there was ejections before there was an actual brawl. And yeah, man, this is. This is this was dirty, man. This was a good one. It's it's funny how earlier you brought up that Perez actually ended up staying in the game. <laughs> he won. He yeah. got credit for the win, bro. Was... You know that that go, uh go, uh-huh. go ahead. Oh, sorry, sorry, cut you off, bro. So going into the the game, the Braves mm-hmm. had a ten and a half game lead in the NL in the NL West. I mean, yeah. I the believe Padres, the Padres. Yeah, the Padres. The Padres, the Padres had a ten game yeah. lead over the Braves. Yes, yes, yes. And that's what I was going to mention, that how weird is it that the Braves were in the NL West? <laughs> yeah, that is. Huh? That's a little bit on the – was it – NL, was it divisions already, or was it um just NL and, and AL? Uh, get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you mean like just uh, – Two leagues. Two leagues. No, well, so it was two leagues, but they did have, they did have divisions within the leagues. And okay, of okay. Course, and of course, I can't find it right now. Um, so the second time Kevin was talking about that because the video's over now, where they charged the mound, it was um Nettles. He got hit, and he charged the mound, and that's when they McSherry ordered the dugouts to be cleared. Um, and that that one was actually in the ninth inning, so you know, game was almost over, and they were still going still, at it. Yeah, still, yeah, yeah. Um, real quick. When you had mentioned that Perez ended up staying and getting the win, it reminded me of um, Robin Ventura and Nolan Ryan. After that, Nolan Ryan ended up staying in the game too. And that was oh, in no the way. 90s. Yeah, I believe that was in the 90s, if I'm not, you know, if I can't recall off the, off the top of my head. But uh, it was a different era. It was a different era. Yeah. So I just looked it up real quick. They had two divisions, bro. NL West, NL East. Ten teams, five five teams in each division. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Um, just a little more on the Padres and Braves. Um, Padres manager Dick Williams suspended for ten days, fined ten thousand uh, dollars. Braves manager Joe Torre three game suspension and a one thousand dollar fine. Five players received three game suspensions and fines, two from the Padres, uh, three from the Braves. And the seven other Padre players and the team's first two ejected acting managers were also fined. So just uh, ugly, bro. And, <laughs> Lots just, of paperwork. Uh, <laughs> a lot. No, in the 80s, bro. They said, ah, Chavez, bro. Hey, I'm cool. <laughs> all right, all right. Everybody, everybody's paying this, and that's it. Um, real quick to add a little, just a little bit extra to it. Um, Kevin and I actually, <laughs> we met. We didn't meet him. We took a picture with Joe Torrey. Um, okay. We saw him at a game uh, years back, and um, we were lucky enough to take a picture with him. And, you know, one day we'll share that with you guys. But, um that's for sure one of my favorite moments of all time, yeah. meeting Joe Torre. Definitely, um, definitely. So, yeah, all that paperwork. <laughs> okay, bro, Um, you want to get into the next one? Uh, I'm losing yeah, right there. So You're the there? next. You ready? Okay, yeah, 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 I got you. Yeah, yeah. The next, next one, we got one of the all-time classic at bats, or uh, at least – from our generation, we would uh to to be alive for. Um, this one is from August 9th, two thousand thirteen. We got Miggy Cabrera versus Mariano Rivera. Mm, let me know when you're ready, bro. Ready, brother. All right, three, two, one. So it's a ninth inning save opportunity. Got a guy on second. He's already at ten pitches. He was co- he was coming off of his uh triple crown year, huh? Yeah, yeah. 
Did you see those numbers real quick? He had like a 348 batting average. Like just crazy, oh, yeah. bro. He, he was uh he was he was hitting 359 going into today's game, into that game, but um first one fell off. Oh, so look at this one. Look, I think over Bay, he I think he overran that. That's over Bay, right? Lyle yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think that was a I think that was a catchable ball, and even the the commentators on the I think this is Tigers broadcast. Mm-hmm. They they kind of foreshadow, you know. Oh, uh, let's let's see if that that doesn't uh, lead to something big here in the inning, you know. Yeah, if he makes him pay. And that was the first pitch he had bat, so he could have been just one and kind of left you know? it over the plate. Um, yeah. Rivera, uh, Cabrera was thirty years old. He played in hundred and forty eight games that year. Collected 193 hits, 26 doubles, 44 home runs, 137 RBI. His slash line, I'll tell it after this pitch. Looks like he's trying to jam him, obviously, with that that um, infamous cutter. cutter inside. Yeah, uh, slash line real quick, 348, 442, 636, and a 1,000, 1.078 OPS. And real quick for Rivera, his final season, obviously the all-time saves leader, 64 games that season, 44 saves, um, 64 innings, 54 strikeouts, a 211 ERA, and a 1.047 whip. Yeah, this is one of those matchups, man. And, And Rivera was at the end, but Miggy was in his. This is oh, Miggy, he was bro. Time. He was his this heyday, is... bro. That was his heyday. Yeah, I remember his fantasy baseball stats he would rack up back in the day, too. <laughs> bro, Miggy was the guy, uh, bro. Just... So, look at that. He fell off a ball off his, off his knee. I think that was the fifth. I want to say probably the fourth pitch of the at-bat. Yeah, possibly. And, and that, that's honestly the reason why this video is so long, the at-bat is so long, because it's only a seven-pitch at-bat. But he he takes some time here because he fell the ball off his knee, ah, and yeah. and yeah man that's gotta hurt. And that, as oh, luck yeah. would have it, the next pitch, the next pitch. So he fell off his knee with uh, off a cutter on the inside, right? So the the next pitch, of, what does he do? Another he cutter inside, fouls it off, fouls it off his knee again. <laughs> Go Just, figure, uh, huh? Like like you mentioned, bro. Like Mariano, he was. Sort of and of his career, I think this, his, but uh, he still had what uh, forty-four saves out of fifty-one save opportunities, and he was he, he's arguably the greatest closer of all time, right? Yeah. So this this said bat was was worth the the ticket alone, the price huh? of admission alone for for all those fans that yeah, man, that's you know. This is what we pay to see. This is what we want to see the best coming off against the best. This is where he fouls it off again. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, he looked so young, bro. Yeah, bro. And so I, I looked it up. Um, that, that, that year, I love Tori Hunter reacting. Ugh. That year, uh, Miggy actually still played. He still played uh, 145 games at third base. He still he still oh, hadn't made the, the full transition over to first. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I thought that was that was pretty cool too. You know, playing playing the hot corner, at, put, putting up triple crown numbers. Mm-hmm. Going away, laid off. Get him off man. So, um, if you guys missed that graphic. Up to this point, they had faced each other four times, and this is the fifth time. Obviously, we know how this one ends. Um, he's going to end up hitting a home run. But then uh, two days later, he hits another home run off of Rivera. I mean, that was a pretty – was it a good pitch, bro? It looked a little low. Nah, it was over, it was over the plate, though. But, I mean, a low a low fast, a low low fast, fastball to a right-handed hitter, is he's going to drive that shit, you know? And then yeah. that, that was to dead center, bro. Dead center on one leg. That's that's Miggy for you, bro. So just just real quick, um, he won the triple crown in 2012. And in 2013, he finished with 44 home runs. Chris Davis had 40, uh, 53. Excuse me. 
Um, RBI had 137. Chris Davis had 138, and he led the league in batting average. So he was one. He was two RBIs away from from leading the league in RBIs and nine homers. So he 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 almost did back to back triple crowns, bro. If it wasn't for Chris Davis. <laughs> Chris, who? <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Damn, bro, I haven't heard that name in a minute. Chris the, the Davis. Oreo, I'm pretty, pretty sure that pisses all the Oreo fans off whenever they hear his name. <laughs> bro, how about this, too? Uh, that's his 108th RBI, 108th RBI in the season. Prince Fielder behind him, remember that? Yeah. Yeah, bro. That was that was a pretty good that was a pretty good uh, Tigers team they had back then. Uh, a young, Hunter, a, the, the a young Iglesias, a young Jose Iglesias, who you, Jose Iglesias I, this year he's tops in a uh, batting average actually, and his glove is always there oh, for Colorado. Yeah. yeah, I think they probably even have Victor Martinez on on that team, didn't they? Bro, Victor Martinez, Verlander, Verlander, Verlander. yeah, that team was stacked, bro. Hunter. Oh man, wow. Uh, that was a post high school for us, huh? Yeah, yeah. Good, the good days, the good old days. Um, so with that one, we'll we'll wrap it up for the reactions, bro. Um, let's get into the news. Okay. So, um, do you want to? Um, everybody knows what we're gonna talk about. <laughs> We're gonna, yeah, we're we have, get we into... have to talk about that the elephant in the room. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sure many people have already spoken about it. Some people don't want to hear about it anymore, but we got to share our thoughts. You know, for we just got to share our our own thoughts, man. It's just what it is. So, um, yeah, uh, Tatis suspended 80 games for close close to ball, or I don't even know how to pronounce that that fucking drug. Cross the ball, yeah. I'm... Cross the ball, close to ball, you cross the ball. ball. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Tomato, tomato. Yeah. <laughs> um, he will end up not playing. So he's suspended through the remainder of the forty-eight, the forty-eight regular season games left, and however, however long it extends into twenty twenty-three, it depends on their playoff run. You know, if they get I, in. I, and... that, that... That's interesting. I didn't. I didn't know. I didn't know that that factored into it. You know. Me neither. Until I read into it, bro. And now he can't play in the World Baseball Classic, which is. Just... I saw that too. I didn't know how that how one thing has to do with the other, but that, that's gotta suck for. Because he can you know? play. That's he can a... probably play winter ball, no. Yeah, he can go play yeah. down in Mexico. Nobody cares down there. Kyle, <laughs> Kyle, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. Like, <laughs> shit. You can probably be, be going down there right now, you know? I'm pretty sure the, the, the Toros de Tijuana will give them a spot on. Or the, actually, their playoffs their playoffs just started down there, so they'll, they'll add them real quick. The to- and the, oh, yeah. The, well, one of the guys that follows us and supports us religiously, not religiously, but he supports us constantly. I'm always seeing him as. His name is Bernardo Flores. I'm sure you've seen his name pop up. That's right. Yeah. yeah he's yeah. uh he's actually pitching for the Diablos Rojos, and um, it's just it's um uh, it's cool now that we're bringing up because you got a Sultana's hat right there for yeah, anybody sir. that's wondering, you know, and that's another jo- that's another big team in Mexico. But um, yeah, bro, it's uh it's a sad thing, bro, and I was listening to. Talking baseball, with Chris Rose and Trevor Plouffe, and Plouffe brought up a good point, bro. It's like at this point, bro, you got your your max. You're not your max deal, but you got your 13 years, your 300 plus million. Why are you not using the team's doctors, bro? Why are you still riding motorcycles? Why are you still playing with the soccer ball in the field? You know, like why, yeah. why, bro? Why do you have to do this shit, bro? Can you just chill and take care of your body and play the damn sport, bro? Like it's it's um it sucks, bro. Like not trying to bash, but it really mm. sucks, bro. He was so fun to watch, bro. That that's that's what it is. That's so that's kind of kind of similar to what the the GM mentioned. Uh, that was a, that was a different article I read. He kind of mentioned that he needs to grow up, 
you know. So he kind of mentioned everything that Ploof and, and Rose talked about, but he kind of wasn't so direct and, and so uh, abrupt with Tatis, you know, because he still got to protect his feelings or whatever. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so it's, you know, it's at, he's 23 years old, you know. It's it it's unacceptable, you know. And so just real quick, he, he missed the final seven weeks of the 2019 season because of a stress reaction in his lowest, lower back. Um, the 2021 season, he was dealing with a bad shoulder all year. And, of course, this year he missed the whole year because of the, that motorcycle incident you referenced and now mm-hmm. this. So, you know, it's like you mentioned, he's, 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 he got his contract. He's, he's a valuable asset. He's, I don't think he realizes how, how valuable of an asset he is, you know. He's 16. <laughs> a lot of money, bro. <laughs> he, yeah, he's, he's a he's – a, he's a, physical specimen bro he's like a you know it it just really sucks for for baseball for the Padres for everyone involved and I I think the difference or I'm not sure it makes it worse for Tatis compared to you know the Canoes the A-Rods the the Manny Ramirez the Ryan Bronze they they all had you know similar situations in their careers but what sucks for Tatis is he's 23, bro. He's he's starting out, you know. He's going to have to deal with this for the next, not only 20, let's say he plays for 20 years. He's going to have to deal with that, you know. Yeah. yeah. Even after his retirement, like Bond, Deira, they're going to, they're dealing yeah. with that their whole life, bro. And mm-hmm. like some of those other players I mentioned, it happened towards, you know, maybe the second half of their career. But it's just, it's just a big black eye, man. Yeah, um, touching back on those injuries you brought up in his four in his first four seasons, he will have only played in two hundred and seventy three out of a possible five hundred and forty six games, bro. Wow! So <laughs> it's a real tough one. And the thing that kind of um got my eye too is that that drug, that specific drug, is has been on the ban list since oh three. Mm. Yeah, that's that's one thing I wanted to mention, and and I'm glad you brought up the team doctors because you're right, man. Why, why is he risking anything? You know, like at at that level, at that level of athlete, you you gotta be watching every little thing. Like I'm pretty sure you've heard all the stories that Tom Brady, like he has avocado ice cream. Like he he watches everything that goes into his body. Like he's, your body's your your money maker. You know, so you yeah. you can't be can't be risking can't be risking yourself like that. You know. Yeah. And one one more thing I wanted to throw on there um, that you mentioned that since it's been banned since the beginning since '03, um, D. Gordon got popped for it in 2016, yep. and Freddie Galvis in 2012. Yeah. So you know why why risk it, bro? When and that's one thing I wanted to ask you. So he said he mentioned it. He was training ringworm, right? You believe him? <laughs> uh, <laughs> nah, I don't, bro. Hey, what the Every, fuck? Everything leads you to, to know, right? I mean, why yeah. why would you? And like I mentioned, it, it just sucks for baseball. He he was the only major leaguer in history with 80 home runs and 50 stolen bases within the first 300 games of his career. And he's now the third player since 1961 to finish within top three of the MVP voting and then miss the entire season the following year. Mm. Damn, bro. So, and recent, recently they just announced too that they're going to swap out his bobblehead day for a Soto jersey day no way oh that's yeah. another thing I want to mention man <laughs> it was all good just a week ago right like to, to reference uh, Jay-Z it was all good just a week ago bro <laughs> they got Soto they're going to you know win the world series all this stuff and... life comes quick huh? life comes quick <laughs> yeah, bro. Hey, bro, the, meanwhile, the Dodgers, this is a nice segue to it. Exactly, yeah. Because the Dodgers are over here just in in their own world, just running over teams. Um, they're coming off their longest win streak of the year. Um, like we said last week, bro, just a juggernaut. And um, not to beat a, a dead horse, bro, but, you know, like they're just doing significant things again, bro. And that's where we're going to cover them real quick. So... They were one short, right, bro, of their longest franchise win streak? Correct. Uh, 12 game win streak, and their franchise record was 13. Um, they were about to sweep the Royals. Um, they got two, they 
they lost 4-0 in a shutout. They only got two hits. And Brady Singer was dealing for the Royals, keeping hitters off balance with the sliders, sinkers, and change-ups. Mm-hmm. And it was only their fifth shutout of the season, the Dodgers. The last one coming on June 27th. They're mm-hmm. just, just a juggernaut. And I, I forgot to write this stat down, but I think they've only lost six times since, uh, like, July 28th to 29th, something like that. Yeah, so actually I have their July and August combined record. Okay, there you go. Um, and it's 33 and 6. Jeez. 33 and 6. They have 29 blowout wins. They're 20 and 4 in the second half. Um, their longest losing streak is four games. The On the 15th, which was yesterday, they were 46 games above 500, which is the most this season for them. And they've been in first place for 119 days. Wow. So, yeah, let's uh let's move on, brother. So, and I, hold on. I just want to mention one more thing, bro. Uh-huh. Uh they out they outscored their opponents by 60 runs in that 12 game stretch and no they won all games by more than one run just, you know, just blowing everybody out. They're so good, bro. And that's all I got, bro. <laughs> They're so good. Um, you want to lead us into crazy, the third segment, bro? The third, the third. Yeah, the third so story. Renee, third, third news story I got for this week is uh, Elvis Andrus and the Oakland A's. It's kind of a, a dark side of baseball. But uh, I wanted to mention it just because, you know, it's a, it's a part of baseball and kind of, you know, brings us back to the lockout that we're dealing with in the offseason, how owners are fighting the players and whatnot. And mm-hmm. uh, so uh, uh, Andrews has been one of the A's best hitters this season in the 103 games. He's, well, the A's aren't doing that great, you know, but I was Andrews is the, one of the best guys on that team. And they're manipulating manipulating his playing time, uh, trying to cut down his uh, number of at-bats. Um, his 1.2 wins above replacement are third best amongst amongst position players on the A's behind catchers Sean Murphy and outfielder Ramon Laureano. Mm-hmm. But he's losing playing time to rookies Nick Allen and Jonah Bright. And uh, Andres' OPS is 97, which is, you know, a little below the league average. But those other two rookies, their OPS pluses are in the 60s. Wow. You know? So, yeah, bro, just completely getting undercut. And under the terms of his contract, Andrus's contract, his his fifteen million dollar club option turns into a player option if he reaches five hundred fifty at bats for oh. the year, right? And he entered Sunday with three seventy six. Um, if he would play every day, he would re- he would reach that threshold, right? But by having Andrus start every other day. And since the beginning of August, he hasn't played every uh he hasn't played consecutive days. They've been taking him out, you know. And by having him start every other day, he's gonna fall seventy eight plate appearances short of the of the five hundred five hundred fifty at bats. So that means they don't have to pay him fifteen million dollars next year. Uh, it's kinda, I is, bro. That's a raw deal. That's a raw deal, you know. Like the A's are always trying to, you know, money buy everybody trying to cut salary but you know you still got to put a productive productive product out there productive and entertaining product on the field and yeah Andrews, and this is one of the and this is one of the good guys i believe in the game you know he's always been an everyday player um solid with his time in the in the rangers so it's just a, a, a dark side of baseball that, that i just wanted to throw out there i don't know what you think about that it is um it is a dark side bro and then i was seeing that he's only 33 so yeah, it man. feels like he's been around way longer, you know, in his early days right there with the the Rangers um, during the Ian Kinsler days, uh, Alexia Gondo. Yeah, he, I, I think he was part of those uh, World Series runs, you know, yeah. that they had in the early 2010s. Yeah, but that's just – yeah, man, that's just playing dirty, bro. Playing dirty, dirty to your own exactly. player. And, and he's uh, – yeah. I would consider him a veteran already and – let him let him get his games and bro, let him get his reps because he even if he doesn't play for the I don't know, um, does he have is he if he gets that player option, he would probably leave, huh? 
No, if he gets a play option, he'll probably he'll probably he'll probably you know pick it up because it's fifteen million dollars a year, and I, yeah. I don't know if his services are are. Yeah, yeah, you're are right. In you're high right. demand are in high demand at this point. Yeah, damn, bro, that sucks. I hate seeing shit like that. But I mean, but if if he doesn't meet the threshold, there's there's no way the the A's are gonna pick up that fifteen million dollar option, you know. Yeah. And it's just, I mean, this is the side of the business that, you know, there's people crunching numbers behind the doors that they don't really give a fuck. And they're no, just going to, they're, they're just seeing numbers and they're like, hey, this is how we're going to cut some costs next year. He's not worth this much. It is what it is. It sucks because um, maybe he has a certain lifestyle. <laughs> hey, I need those 15 million, bro. Hey, this, <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure he's, 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 he's not a, He's not <laughs> struggling to, to pay for his meals at the end of the day, you know. But yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, you you work hard for to be able to have that contract, you know, and those things get worked out in the contract way ahead of time. So it just sucks for them to to sit for that one. But let's let's end the the new segment on a on a high note with yes, uh, my boy Winton Bernard. Uh, he made his debut for the Colorado Rockies last week. Thirty-one year old. Uh, yeah, he was thirty-one year old at at, at his debut, right? Yeah. Um Ten-year minor leaguer, six stints in in foreign leagues, and he actually got his first hit in that first game, which was pretty cool for him. Um, <laughs> it was an ugly first hit because uh, he beat out a, a dribbler to third base, but he got called out and. Thankfully for replay, it got overturned. Good, uh, good. That, that was one of the things that he mentioned. Uh, they asked him what, what what was going, on, and he said he was just thankful that he was in the in the majors because they have instant replay. And he he says he can he can he cannot count how many times this happened to him in the minor leagues, and you just can't challenge it, you know. Yeah, that's. And then I'm sure you saw that video, bro, where he was talking to his mom. That shit. Ugh. That shit's uh, oh, it yeah, you, man. It makes you think about your mom and shit. Somebody, you know, was, like, somebody was cutting somebody was somebody was cutting <laughs> onions in the room, bro. Yeah. Now <laughs> you were crying. <laughs> yeah, bro. So <laughs> those are those feel good moments, bro, that it just reminds you, man, about like what these guys in the minors go through, bro, just to try to get a shot at the majors. Like some people really give up their whole lives through that struggle just to get a shot. And you know, I hope he stays in the majors for another 10, bro, so he can get his pension and, and mm. live a happy life, bro. Because, damn, bro, 10 years in the minors, bro. And Trevor, er, earlier again, too, Trevor Poof said he spent six years and he he says that it was, he felt like, it felt like forever. Like, it was just, you know. Fuck, man, yeah, bro. Such, such a grind, you know, and, and, he he bounced around a little bit. He got drafted by the Padres in 2012. Um, spent some time with Detroit, the Giants, the Cubs, and now with the Rockies, of course. And that that was another part of the, you know, uh, a good story. So Bud Black, the manager of the the Rockies right now, he was part of a mm-hmm. uh, part of that coaching staff on the Padres that drafted him in 2012. You know, mm-hmm. kind of just bringing in everything full circle. Only and, in the uh, sport, just one bro. One thing I wanted to add. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Exactly. You know, it's all it's all about timing. You know, you can't you can't script none of this shit, but it all it all makes sense at the end of the day, right? Um, he after getting his first hit, he stole second base, and according to that, Inc. at thirty one years old and three hundred and twenty two days debut. Um, he was hitting three twenty five. With 17 homers, 24 doubles, eight triples, and 74 RBI at AAA. So you know he's he finally got the chance, and hopefully he can uh, seize his opportunity. Yeah, hell yeah, yeah. Let's hope for a long, healthy career for him, bro. It'd be uh, one of the greatest stories of our era, of our generation. So that covers the news. Um, we're gonna end with. A quick little sparkle quiz. So we're going to do a missing word Hall of Fame first baseman quiz. Can you name the first names of these Hall of Fame first basemen? It's a four-minute timer. Um, it's an out-of-14 score. 
Kevin and I are going to go head to head. And uh, whoever, if you finish first, say it. If I finish first, say it. And then uh, we'll just go from there. So um, whenever you're ready, bro, count down and we'll get right. cracking. Uh, All right, just real quick, this, this shit better not take us four minutes, bro, but let's get it. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Ready? Count. All right. Ready. Three, two, one. Play. All right. Oh, we have to click into this box. Okay. We got two left, wait. <laughs> Me too. I, who's I who's one Perez left. I got and one. Chance? <laughs> I got one uh, left. Oh, no, no, no. I got... I know. I, I got I got Chance. I got Chance. I think I got Chance. No. Who is it? Tell me, tell oh, me. No, I don't. <laughs> nope. Um, Perez, that was the guy from the Reds, huh? Jeez, who the hell? Nah, 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 nah. Just don't think about it too much. You got chance already? No, no, no. I'm missing two. I need chance and, and Perez. Um, not Eddie Perez. What the hell is his name? He was part of the Big Red Machine, right? Yeah. The 75 and 76. Ah, shoot. Ah, bro, what is this? I thought it was Dean Chance, bro, but no, nah, that's not him. Um, Perez, 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 jeez. Yeah, bro, I really don't know Chance. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. You're never going to get Perez, bro. I already got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I can I can see his face, bro. I can see him swinging. I can see him, you know, doing everything. But I just I just can't. Ah, this is terrible. This is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we, I feel like we should know this just because of just because of all the the history we, we've been reading. You I know? just I just need chance. Wait, if you give me that one, we're good. <laughs> Chance, chance. Bobby Chance. <laughs> I'm just putting random ass names, bro. <laughs> I was putting like Bob Chance. Bob, no. Uh, I don't know. I don't What's the guy for the Reds, bro? That's, that thing's gonna it's gonna make me lose sleep tonight, man. That thing is fucking... Uh, I'll, I'll end up winning, bro, if we run out of time at 13. <laughs> so you're running out I of won, time. yeah. I have the lead, I have the lead. We got, we got 40 seconds left. Oh, this is terrible, bro. Give, give me the first letter. Give me the first letter. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Ni madre, dude. <laughs> no, 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 no. 30 seconds away, you're running out of time. Uh, yeah, Chance, bro. Flag, bro. You, all right, give up. I don't even. I don't even know what error chance would be for the cup, Frank. Bro. Frank. Frank Chance. So it was Tony Perez. Ah, uh, you cheated. How did you find Frank? I gave up. You said you waved uh, the white flag, right? You said you waved the white flag. Uh, yeah, yeah, I did. Tony so Perez, I just, wow, bro. That's... Uh, so I just hit give up, and it gives you the answer real quick. Oh, shit. But yeah, okay. I mean, once once you see the recordings later, you'll see. Tony um, Perez, damn. That that, was that's going to that's gonna bug me for a couple of days, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. All right. So I hit stop recording on my screen. All right, cool, bro. Uh, 
So that wraps up this week's episode. That was cool. We finally got that quiz in. We'll try to do another one next week. Uh, something a little tougher, even though we had trouble with this one, obviously. Um, yeah, thank you for joining. If you got here, if you got this this far, appreciate you. Make sure you hit like. Um, we got episodes every Wednesday. They'll be up every Wednesday, 6 a.m. Eastern. They'll be up by that time. Um, uh, thank you, whoever watches, and we appreciate you. So uh, any, any last words, Kevin? Uh, no, just thanks for joining us again. Um, it was really fun, this one. I think we're we're getting better at it as the, the weeks go by. And just uh, thanks for making this part of your day, you know, everybody, for all you guys going back to school out there. I know my little one started kinder this week, so, you know, hopefully you could just make this part of your part of your days. Uh, just throw on the podcast and, you know, listen to us talk baseball and have fun, you know? Yeah. Uh, I'm working on also getting the podcast onto, like, Apple Music, Spotify, all that stuff so that you can listen to just the audio. Um, and then once Kevin and I get that done, we will obviously notify you guys so that the podcast can be available on uh, multiple platforms for easier consumption. There you go. So yeah, without further ado, we'll catch you guys next time. Peace. Hey, guys.